Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so excited. Listen, to bring God's truth to you, it's so exciting. You know why? It's because it's by the Spirit of God. And when, once you're under the influence of God's Spirit, that's, that's where you want to live. Praise God. <laughs> you, know, you, you just want to live there. Because while you're under the influence of the Spirit of God, ideas are coming to you. Now, actually what's going on is He's building you up. Praise God. And remember what Paul said in Acts chapter 20. He says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. Hallelujah. He is building you up to give you an inheritance. Never forget that. That's why Paul says we should know what is the hope of his calling. See? Lots of people don't know what is the hope of God's calling in their life. For example, we're talking about hearing the voice of God, understanding the voice of God. Why is this so important? It's important because without that, you are probably lost. See, so part of the hope of his calling is to have a fellowship with you. God wants to have a fellowship with you. He doesn't want someone to interfere with his, his fellowship with you. He doesn't want a go between, you know, between him and you. He doesn't want it. He wants to relate with you directly. He, he wants to talk to you when you wake up. He wants to talk to you when you lie down. He, now, you remember in um, Deuteronomy chapter 6, Moses was instructing them about dealing with God's word. He said, write it on your on, on, on your doorpost, write it on your wrist, put it on your forehead, let it be the last thing you see before you sit, sit down. When you sit down, let it be there. When you lie down. Now, what's he talking about? You see, he wasn't just referring to the law. Now, that's one thing we miss even when we study the Old Testament. We think the Old Testament was just about the laws. The Old Testament has several examples of people who received the word of God, people who walked with the Lord and, and fellowshiped with Him. See? Now, those words they received. See, Abraham didn't raise his son Isaac with the law. There was no law then. But Isaac turned out right. Isaac didn't raise Jacob. He didn't raise his children by the law. You understand what I'm talking about? Now, it is the words that they learned from the Lord that they shared with their children and shared with everyone who, who was around them. Now, that's why the Bible says, the just shall live by his faith. Now, what does that mean? It means you, the just man, the sum of your whole life, the sum of your whole existence is going to be by your faith. Question then is, what is faith? See, now, faith I told you this is the, the, the simplest and I think the best definition of faith. Faith is your response to God's word. See, when you hear the voice of God, your response to it is faith. So, if the word of God doesn't come to you, there is no faith. Romans tells us faith cometh by hearing and hearing what? The word of God. Now, it's not hearing a preacher preach. Now, now, a preacher can be preaching and the word of God will come to you. Not necessarily what the preacher said, but the word of God can come to you as a result of what the preacher said. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why whenever you're in a Christian gathering, it doesn't matter who's preaching. You know, sometimes people don't, don't understand. They say, oh, I don't like this preacher. And the moment you just say, I don't like this preacher, you close up your heart. It doesn't matter who's preaching. It might be a 10-year-old boy who knows nothing. He can, he, he can even be a novice. But as long as the person is standing there in the name of the Lord, don't start judging the person by the construction of the language, the scriptural connotation. No, 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 no. What's he saying? What testimony is he bearing? Now, if you are listening to for the voice of God, now, that's what you should be doing even when you're in church. When you're in church, you should be, oh, you know, the preacher is preaching. You're like, Lord, my heart is open. You know, sometimes the preacher just says one line and then you go off that whole service. 
you understand what I'm saying? You just go off that whole service. And then the Spirit of God just begins to teach you things and teach you things. So sometimes the preacher is preaching. He he's the preacher is in, in, in maybe in the book of Matthew. He says, open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5 and verse, and then you open your Bible to Matthew chapter 5. And then he's explaining something, and suddenly the word of God hits you. And they're like, hold on, hold on, Lord. Is that what you're really saying? And then you, the preacher is still talking in Matthew. And then you begin to go back to Exodus. And then you go, go back to, in that same service, what's going on? The Spirit of God is dealing with you. You understand what I'm saying? Now, now someone may ask you, sorry, what did the preacher just say? Um, you see? But what did the Lord just say? Oh, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So what happened was the word of God came to you while the preacher was preaching. Now, this can happen when you're in a meeting. I mean, in a board meeting. This can happen when you're in school. I'm telling you something. You know, David said something. He says, I know better than my teachers. You know why? He said, because your word is my meditation. You need to understand that. So the teacher is teaching. You know, A plus this and maybe mathematics or algebra or whatever you whatever it is. And then he's just and then the spirit of God just said, Do you know? And now you 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 oh I wish you can understand this. You are trying to understand calculus. You are trying to understand something this teacher is teaching. And then you're finding it difficult. Listen! Switch to the Holy Ghost, who's the great teacher. He said, can the Holy Ghost teach me calculus? You don't know him. <laughs> can the Holy Ghost teach me government? You don't know him. There is nothing he cannot teach you. And let me tell you the truth. When he teaches you, oh dear Lord, by the time you bring your own example to your teacher, your teacher, where did you get this from? That's what David meant. I know better than my teachers because the Holy Ghost was his real teacher. Praise God. I've got to stop here. This is getting so exciting. Listen, we'll continue tomorrow. Bye-bye.